Hello students, my name is Alok Semwar and in today's lecture I am going to discuss about ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. In this lecture I will discuss introduction, principle, detailed instrumentation and applications of ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. So before starting ultraviolet spectroscopy, it is very important to know about the modern instrumental methods which are used for this determination of structures of various compounds. There are various methods which are used for structural determinations. First method used for the determination of a structure is known as nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. In short form it is also known as NMR spectroscopy. Nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy is very useful for the determination of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus. Infrared spectroscopy. In short form it is known as IR spectroscopy. IR spectroscopy is used for the determination of functional groups. Third method is mass spectrometry which is used for the determination of molecular mass. Next method is ultraviolet spectroscopy and visible spectroscopy. Ultraviolet spectroscopy as well as visible spectroscopy is used for the determination of conjugation of compounds. In short form it is known as UV visible spectroscopy. Fifth method is X-ray spectroscopy and it is used for the determination of surface morphology of different compounds. Sixth and seventh method include atomic absorption and atomic emission spectroscopy and these methods are used for the determination of various elements. Combinedly, these all methods are used for the determination of exact structure of any compound under investigation. Now next topic is spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is the branch of science that deals with the study of interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter. So, in spectroscopy, we study interaction of electromagnetic radiation which is a form of energy with substance under investigation. So, when the electromagnetic radiation of certain type is incident upon any substance under investigation, it produces a specific spectrum. Spectrum study generates the base of spectroscopy. Now we will understand spectroscopy by this representation. Now when any physical stimulus uh, means EMR which represents electromagnetic radiation is incident upon any molecule which is under investigation, it generates a response. Detecting instrument detect that response and generates a spectrum. Spectrum is a visual representation of the various structural properties of the molecule. So study of this spectrum is the base of spectroscopy. Now electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation consists of discrete packages of energy which are called as photons. So EMR consists of various photons. Now a photon consists of an oscillating electric field which is represented by capital E and oscillating magnetic field which is represented by capital M and they are perpendicular to each other. 
Now we will discuss about electromagnetic radiation. In this picture you can see a wave like structure, this one and this represents electromagnetic radiation. Here are two waves, first is the red wave and it represents electric field while the blue wave represents magnetic field. Combinedly they mix electromagnetic radiation. There are various parameters which are associated with electromagnetic radiations and these include energy E, frequency N and wavelength lambda. Now energy is directly proportional to frequency and inversely proportional to wavelength and it is indicated by the equation below. In this equation E is equal to H nu where E is energy, H is Planck constant and nu is frequency of radiation. Now in this case energy is directly proportional to frequency nu while it is inversely proportional to wavelength because nu is equal to C upon lambda. So if we put this value in this equation it becomes E is equal to H C upon lambda. So energy is proportional to uh, energy is inversely proportional to wavelength. Now frequency n is number of times electrical radiation oscillates in one second. Next term is wavelength. It is represented by lambda and it is the distance between two maxima. In this picture these are two maxima positions. The distance between these two maxima is known as wavelength. It is represented by lambda. Lambda is a very important parameter in spectroscopy. Now in this picture you can see different regions of electromagnetic radiations. These regions are gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, infrared and radio waves. These regions are of different wavelength and different energy. Some are in longer wavelength region and some regions are in shorter wavelength region. How we can classify longer and shorter wavelength regions? See here, these are two maxima and the distance between these two maxima is higher than the distance between these two maxima. So the wavelength region is higher here while the wavelength region is shorter here. Now there is a huge difference of energy between these wavelength regions. In longer wavelength regions the amount of energy involved is lower. In shorter wavelength region the energy is higher. So we can say gamma rays and x rays are in higher energy region while radio waves are in lower energy region. While in case of wavelength, gamma rays and X-rays are shorter wavelength side while radio waves are in longer wavelength side. Ultraviolet region is in between 200 to 400 nanometer. While visible radiation in between 400 to 800 nanometer. Visible light is again further subdivided into different regions like 400 nanometer which is represented by purple color 500 nanometer which is around uh, in between in between green and blue color 600 nanometer which is yellow in color and 700 nanometer which is red in color now ultraviolet visible spectroscopy is a type of electronic absorption spectroscopy and it is based on the electronic absorption phenomena the principle is based on the measurement of a spectrum of a sample containing atoms or molecules. Spectrum is produced when we incident ultraviolet or visible radiation upon any molecule under investigation. Spectrum is a graph of intensity of absorbed or emitted radiation by sample versus frequency nu or wavelength lambda. Spectrum contains the information about the absorbed or emitted frequency.
study of absorbed or emitted radiation forms the basis of ultraviolet visible spectroscopy now in spectroscopy there are two terms involved first one is absorption and second one is emission absorption and emission terms are very important now in this picture you can see when an electron absorbs the energy it shifts from ground to excited state in this case it absorbs the energy and study of this absorbed energy forms the basis of absorption spectroscopy emission is the reversible phenomena in this case when the excited electron shifts from excited to ground state it emits the energy study of this emitted radiation or energy forms the basis of emission spectroscopy in this picture you can see that when any electron absorbs the energy it shifts from lower energy state to higher energy state now in emission case it shifts from higher energy state to lower energy state if no radiation is emitted the transition from higher to lower energy level is called as non radiative decay absorption of ultraviolet visible region produces transitions in transition as i said earlier the electron shifts from lower energy level to higher energy level by the absorption of energy in emission it shifts from higher to lower energy level now we will discuss possible electronic transitions so before starting possible electronic transitions we will study about the different types of electrons there are three types of electrons found in different type of compounds first type is n electrons second one sigma electrons and third one pi electrons n electrons are free electrons and these are found in nitrogen and oxygen related compounds sigma electrons are found in single bonded or saturated compounds pi electrons are found in unsaturated or double bonded triple bonded compounds there are different types of transitions in these electrons in this picture these are different energy levels this one is ground state sigma energy level we can also name it as sigma bonding energy level this one is pi bonding energy level this one is n non bonding energy level these two energy levels are sigma anti bonding and pi anti bonding here the asterisk denotes anti bonding state so the transition in these type of electrons are of different kinds in n electrons the transition are of two types and these two types are n to pi anti bonding and n to sigma anti bonding in sigma electrons the transitions are sigma to pi anti bonding and sigma to sigma anti bonding in pi electrons the transitions are pi to pi anti bonding and pi to sigma anti bonding these are all possible transitions now when electromagnetic radiation interacts with matter 
it causes transition in ultraviolet visible spectroscopy the main type of transition is pi to pi antibonding transition that's why it is used for the detection of unsaturation because pi electrons are unsaturated electrons now there are different types of energy levels like electronic energy levels vibrational energy levels and rotational energy levels in ultraviolet visible spectroscopy the main energy level involved is electronic energy level and it is based on electronic transitions now the principle of ultraviolet visible spectroscopy is based on beers lambert's law these are absorbance laws so according to beers law the intensity of a beam of monochromatic light decreases exponentially with the increase in concentration of the absorbing substance now according to this definition monochromatic light intensity decreases with the increase in concentration of the absorbing substance concentration is denoted by c monochromatic light is a light which contains a single wavelength or a single color mathematical representation of this law is it is equal to i not e to the power minus kc now in this case various representations are i not is incident light it is transmitted light k is constant and c is concentration now the lambert's law when a beam of light is allowed to pass through a transparent medium the rate of decrease of intensity with the thickness of medium is directly proportional to the intensity of light in short form this lambert's law depends on thickness of the medium various representations in mathematical equations are it is equal to i not e to the power minus kt where it denotes transmitted light i not denote incident light k is constant and t is thickness of the medium thickness of the medium denotes thickness of the qubit while the concentration denotes concentration of absorbing substances so beer's law is concentration dependent while lambert's law is thickness dependent now if we combine these equations we will get equation it is equal to i not e to the power minus kct here you can see both terms concentration as well as thickness now converting equation to international log base 10 the equation generates it is equal to i not 10 to the power minus kct rearranging equation generates i not upon it is equal to 10 to the power kct now taking log it becomes log i not upon it is equal to kct this equation is the mathematical statement of beers lambert's law now relationship in between absorbance a transmittance t and molar absorptivity is a is equal to ect which is equal to log i not upon it which is equal to log 1 upon t so putting this value in equation 6 equation becomes a is equal to kct 
or A is equal to ECT. In this case, A is absorption, K is constant, C is concentration, and T is thickness of the medium. While in the second equation, A is absorbance, E is again constant, which is called as molar absorptivity constant, C is concentration, and T is thickness. Combined equation for Beer's number law is A is equal to ECT, where A is absorption, E is molar absorptivity, C is concentration, and T is thickness. If we rearrange this equation, it becomes C is equal to A upon ET. Now Concentration we have to determine, absorption we will determine by determining the absorption of the unknown substance. E molar absorptivity is generally given in standard books. T is thickness of the medium and the value of this is 1. So if we put the value of A, E and T in this equation, we can determine the concentration of unknown substance. The instrument used in ultraviolet visible spectroscopy is known as ultraviolet visible spectrophotometer. Spectrophotometers are of two types. First one is single beam spectrophotometer. Second one is double beam spectrophotometer. Single beam spectrophotometer uses single beam of light while the double beam spectrophotometer uses two beams of light. Now different parts of single beam spectrophotometer. In single beam spectrophotometer, first part is source of light. Source of light produces electromagnetic radiation. Second part is monochromator. Monochromator is composed of and translate dispersion element and exit slit. Combinedly, this assembly is called as monochromator. Next part is sample holder which is cubate. Last part of the spectrophotometer is detector. In single beam spectrophotometer, light travels from source to monochromator, then it is incident upon the sample and analyzed by the detector. Now double beam spectrophotometer contains light source, monochromator, different mirrors, beam splitter, sample holder, reference sample holder and detectors. Different parts of the single beam and double beam spectrophotometers have different works. Light source produces the desired radiation. It may be ultraviolet or visible. The work of monochromator is very complex. Radiation from the source passes through the entrance slit and incident upon the dispersion device. Dispersion device converts the radiation into its constituent wavelengths. 
only a single wavelength passes through the exit slit at a time then it is incident upon the mirror from where it reflects an incident upon the beam splitter beam splitter converts the single beam into two beams one passes through the sample and second through the reference sample cells are qubits after passing through the sample and reference both beams are recombined detector detects it and further the readout device shows the spectrum of the compound now we will discuss sources of ultraviolet radiation in this picture you can see a light source this one is a deuterium lamp sources of ultraviolet radiations are deuterium and hydrogen lamps when deuterium lamp is excited through the electrical energy it produces radiation radiation range of these lamps is between range 160 to 375 nanometer A deuterium lamp is a discharge light source with deuterium sealed in a bulb. As it uses a hot cathode to achieve a stable and reliable arc discharge, approximately 10 second for preheating is required before starting the discharge. A deuterium lamp requires a large and complex power supply, making it more expensive than a halogen lamp. however it is one of the few continuous spectrum light sources that is stable in the ultraviolet range so however the halogen lamp is expensive because it produces a continuous spectrum in the ultraviolet range it is widely used lamp next are sources of visible radiation In this picture you can see two lamps. First one is simple tungsten lamp while the second one is tungsten halogen lamp. These lamps are used to produce the visible radiation. Radiation range is more than 350 nanometer. A simple tungsten lamp is similar to a normal incandescent lamp. A halogen lamp filament heats up and emits light when a current flows through it. Consequently, the bulb containing the filament of a normal incandescent lamp is filled with an inert gas to prevent evaporation of the tungsten. Halogen lamps are stable over time, offer a long service life and are relatively cheap. That's why halogen lamps are the most widely used lamps. Other lamps include xenon lamp which is also called as xenon arc lamp, xenon flash lamp and low pressure mercury lamp. Next part is wavelength selector. It is also known as monochromator. Monochromator is composed of an intense slit a collimating lens a dispersing device a focusing lens and exit slit dispersing device are of two types first is prism second one is grating 
composition of prism is glass quartz and silica nowadays glass is avoided because it absorbs the electromagnetic radiation composition of grating is aluminum here the dispersing power of grating is greater than the prism next part is sample holder cubits are used as an sample holders composition of cubit is quartz or fused silica here in this picture you can see cubits these are math cells math cells are of exactly same composition glass is avoided because it absorbs electromagnetic radiation next is selection of solvent different types of solvents are used in ultraviolet visible spectroscopy however the solvent selection have some criterias these criterias include the solvent should completely solubilize the sample at the desired concentration the solvent should be ultraviolet transparent at the measuring wavelength it means solvent should not absorb at the measuring wavelength suppose that you are working at 350 to 400 nanometer then you have to select the solvent which solubilizes the sample at the desired concentration and it does not absorb in between 350 to 400 nanometer solvent should be non reactive in nature different solvent used and their wavelength of absorption are water 191 nanometer for ether 215 nanometer for methanol 203 nanometer for ethanol 204 nanometer chloroform 237 nanometer carbon tetrachloride 265 nanometer for benzene 280 nanometer and for tetrahydrofuran 220 nanometer so last part of the instrumentation of ultraviolet visible spectrophotometer include detectors detectors are used to detect the radiation obtained from the sample in ultraviolet visible spectrophotometer there are different type of de detectors used first is photomultiplier detector second one is barrier layer cell third one is photovoltaic cell and the next one is charged coupled devices now i am going to discuss the construction and working of photomultiplier detector photomultiplier detector is the most widely used detector in ultraviolet visible spectrophotometers as the name suggest photomultiplier detector works on the fundamental of multiplication of photoelectrons the principle employed in this detector is multiplication of photoelectrons by secondary emission of electrons this multiplication of photoelectrons results in increase in the signal strength now in these pictures you can see the construction of photomultiplier detector it consists of a vacuum tube a primary photoemissive cathode Eight to ten dynodes, and 
collector electrode. The primary photo emissive cathode is photosensitive. Different dynodes are positively charged. These dynodes are charged with increasing potential of 75 to 100 volt higher than preceding one. Now la last one is the collector electrode which collects the electron. When the radiation coming from the sample strikes the first photoemissive cathode it results in generation of electrons. These electrons are attracted by the dynodes which are fixed each with increasing potential. So the electron strikes the first dynode which causes multiplication of electrons. Then these are attracted by the different dynodes which causes further multiplication. At last these multiplied electrons are collected by the collected electrode and the signal produced by these electrons is the fingerprint of analysis of the sample under investigation. Photomultiplier are extremely sensitive to light and is best suited when weaker or low radiation is received. Because of the multiplication process, they increases the signal strength. Now next main detector used in ultraviolet visible spectrophotometers is barrier layer cell. Barrier layer cell is also known as photovoltaic cell. This is the picture of barrier layer cell. In this picture you can see it consists of a semiconductor selenium. This yellow portion denotes the selenium semiconductor. Selenium is deposited on a strong metal base such as iron. This red portion denotes the iron metal base. Now a very thin layer of silver and gold is sputtered over the surface of semiconductor. This is the thin layer of silver. It acts as an second collector electrode. Now when the radiation coming from the sample falls upon this thin layer of silver or gold, it generates electrons. Electrons are attracted towards the iron surface because it is maintained at positive potential. But the selenium semiconductor stops the transport of electrons towards the iron surface. This causes accumulation of electrons on thin layer of silver. It produces the voltage difference between silver surface and base of the cell. Photocurrent is flow which is directly proportional to the intensity of incident radiation beam. Barrier layer cells are also very sensitive in nature. Next is applications of ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. Ultraviolet visible spectroscopy is used for qualitative as well as quantitative analysis. In qualitative analysis, we can characterize the aromatic and conjugated olefins. In quantitative analysis, we can determine the molar concentration of solute under study. Qualitative analysis is based on the detection of conjugation. 
where quantitative analysis is based on the determination of molar concentration of solute under study. Now we can determine the molar concentration of solute under study by various methods. First method is calibration curve method. Second method is Beer's Lambert law. Third method is extrapolation method. I will discuss details of these methods in upcoming classes. This is the example of characterization of aromatic and conjugated olefins by ultraviolet spectroscopy. Here you can see the structure of paracetamol. This is the ultraviolet spectrum of paracetamol. This spectra is a standard spectra. Ultraviolet spectrum contains two parameters absorbance and wavelength. The unit of wavelength is nanometer and it is denoted by lambda. In this picture you can see a high intensity peak at 243.57 nanometer. This peak is for paracetamol. So we can say 243.57 nanometer is a unique range for this paracetamol. So if you have to detect paracetamol in any of the sample, you will obtain the spectra of the test sample by ultraviolet spectroscopy and then you have to check whether there is any peak at 243.57 nanometer. Other applications of ultraviolet visual spectroscopy includes determination of impurities, detection of isomers, Thank you.